Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Muggle Magic. Today we're going to be making the candy boxes to go in the Skiving Snack Box. The actual Skiving Snack Box itself I will do um, in another video, but this is just for the boxes of candy that go in them, such as the Puking Pastels, the Fainting Fancies, the Fever Fudge, and the Nosebleed Nougat. And this project was included in my 30K mystery box, so this is one of the unreleased projects from that. I'm also gonna be announcing the winner of the 40K mystery box at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. If you do enjoy my Harry Potter DIYs, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, like and share this video, it really does help out the channel. Go ahead and check out the description box below for all the supplies you're gonna need to make this project, as well as the free downloadable templates, and let's get started. First, you want to download and print the uh, templates. And I printed mine on eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. And these are printed single sided and I printed them on my laser printer at home. Now there are two versions of the templates. This one is, uh, it goes beyond where you want to cut it because this these templates in particular were designed to use a uh, Cricut or die cutter in order to cut them out. And the Cricut's also gonna do the scoring as well. And uh, the Cricut templates, as well as the scoring template and the cut guide is all included in the download. If you're cutting them out by hand, you want the uh, ones that are not in the Cricut folder, basically. And they're just gonna have uh, rounded edges over here and they're gonna be a little bit smaller because this, like I said, it has some, uh, some bleed area around the edge so that when Cricut cuts it out or your die cutter cuts it out, it uh, won't have any white around the edge. So with that out of the way, um, yeah, you wanna cut these out. Um, if you're using your die cutter, you can load that into your uh, design software that came with your die cutter and you should be able to just go ahead and score it and cut it out automatically right there with your die cutter. And now once you have all of them uh, cut out, it should they should look like this. Um, they have little windows in them so that you can see the candy that's on the inside. And uh, my Cricut actually did the scoring for me. So these are gonna be very easy to fold. Um, I don't have to do any guessing as to where the folds are. I can just, you know, fold it all up according to where the score marks are. So we'll start off with this and it's gonna be the same for all these boxes. So I'm just gonna show you how to do one and you should be able to do the rest just based off of this. So I'm just gonna fold it everywhere where those score marks are. And you can watch if, you, if you're doing this by hand, you can score it yourself or you can just watch how I'm folding it and you can try and mimic what I'm doing here. So, there we go. I've got to say that I am loving my <laughs> Cricut Explore Air 2 is what I have, and I love this thing. Um, it's making my DIY project so much easier Where when it comes to cutting and folding. You can cut more intricate and more exact lines. It's just perfect. And there we go. That's how the box should be folded. And then now what we wanna do is glue this together. So I'm going to get a, a little piece of scrap paper underneath so that I don't get any glue on my cutting mat. The first time I did this, I tried it with a glue stick and honestly, it just didn't work out. It didn't stick as well as, as I wanted it to. So for just plain paper, a glue stick will work, but for cardstock and when you're making a box, I would suggest using a glue gun a hot glue gun or you know something that's going to have a better hold so i'm just going to use my hot glue gun i'm going to put a few dots of glue on here i'm going to start with just these corners there we go and now these are going to fold uh, up like this and then this part is going to close in on it and I've done that on both sides, so the box should look like this so far. 
And now the next thing we want to do is right where we glued those tabs in on either side, these are gonna fold in and they're gonna glue on the inside. And then this front one is also gonna fold around and down and we're gonna glue this in right here, just like that. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue right on this whole, all three of these uh, flaps just along the outside of the box. And you don't want it to be like huge globs of, of hot glue or anything. Um, just a small amount will work and it should hold it really well. Just be, be sure to do it quickly so that it doesn't dry on you before you actually uh, glue it down. There we go. And it's really, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Now these, uh, this top with these flaps folded in like this, you should be able to close your box up there. So then the next thing is to get the candy on the inside of this box. I actually just went to a candy shop and I found some gummies that looked about like the right color for the puking pastels. Um, yeah, I think this turned out really good. We've got purple on one side and blue on the other. So these are gonna look really nice inside this box. And when you open it up, it's gonna be pretty convincing that that's what these are. Although the ones that I found are whale shapes. So that's kind of strange, but eh. So I've just gotten some Ziploc baggies. These are the small um, snack size Ziplocs because they fit in there pretty well. And these boxes won't hold a whole lot of candy. so. Don't pack them too full or they won't close properly. So you just get a few and put them in a bag. And now that I have this candy in the bag, what I'm gonna do is just make sure that it fits properly inside the box. And it does. I could actually probably put two more pieces of candy in there if I wanted to, and you can see them through this little window here. You could just keep it in the Ziploc and put it in the box and you're done. However, I kind of wanted mine to look a little more professional than just putting, putting a Ziploc bag in there. So I'm going to try and get as much air out as possible, like this, and then I'm going to Ziploc it closed. And then I'm go I have two metal rulers here. So I'm going to put uh, basically just this top part of the bag right up to the Ziploc between the two metal rulers so that I have just a little bit of the bag. I'll see if I can get a better view of that. There we go. So yeah, you have just a little bit of the bag of the below the Ziploc showing through right there. And now I have some clamps, which I'm going to clamp these together. So it's basically pinching this bag closed between the two rulers. There. So this is what you should have so far. And then you can take a pair of scissors and cut the Ziploc part off, but definitely leave some excess plastic bag <laughs> on the outside of this. So you just uh, cut off the Ziploc part and have some extra bag right there. Then we're just gonna take a lighter and I'm going to seal it closed with a lighter just like this. Now that I have this one side sealed here, I'm going to do the same thing to this side that has a bunch of like empty bag space. Cut the bag and seal it shut with fire. There, so there we go. Now we have a nice looking bag of candy. It looks a lot better than a Ziploc bag. So your box of puking pastels should look just like this, and you should be able to see some of the candy right there in that window. And here are the finished products. So I have uh, obviously the puking pastels that we did, fainting fancies, fever fudge, and nosebleed nougat. And I tried to find 
candy at my local candy shop that were either matched the correct colors or just looked like the right thing. For the fainting fancies, I use these gummies and these are orange and peach. They're supposed to be orange and lemon, but um, I think the color works fine and they taste good. So yeah, these definitely work for the fainting fancies. For the nosebleed nougat, I used uh, this, and this is basically just chocolate with nuts. And it's, it's not really nougat, but I mean, it tastes really good, so who cares? And for the fever fudge here, I used this, and this is like a white chocolate almond, um, like a brittle, and it's really good. So yeah, I think this looked good for that. And yeah, that's the candy that I used. I really hope this project helped you guys out in making these candy boxes. Again, I will be doing the actual uh, skiving snack box, which opens up and everything in a later video. I just wanted to get these candy boxes done in a separate video because um, the actual box itself is gonna be a little bit of a more involved uh, project than this, so it just kind of makes sense to separate them. And now to announce the winner of the 40k mystery box. This is a mystery box which includes seven items. Um, five of them are things that I've done on my channel before, projects that I've made, and two of them are going to be completely unreleased projects of mine that I haven't released on my channel and I won't release the videos until after the winner receives this box because I don't want to spoil any of, of what's inside of it for them. And the winner is... Patrick Johnson. Congratulations, and I've sent you an email with instructions on how you can claim your prize. I'm just so excited that my channel hit 40,000 subscribers. I literally never thought that it would get to this point, and it just makes me so happy that you guys are interested in, in the projects that I'm doing and, and love what I'm doing enough to subscribe to the channel and watch my videos. So as a show of appreciation, I'm choosing two more winners for this uh, 40K subscriber giveaway, but it's not going to be the actual mystery box. There's one winner for the mystery box. These two are going to be runners up. You guys are going to win one mystery item that I've handpicked from items that I've made in the past. So those two winners are Angela Yang and Elaine N. Congratulations to both of you and I've also sent you an email with instructions on how you can claim your prize. Remember I get a lot of ideas for these DIYs that I do from your comments. So if you have an idea for something that you want to see me do in the future, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing more DIY videos having to do with Harry Potter and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.